My name is Ann Mason. I am the Executive Director of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society. This is the fifth and final video in our series on gravestone epitaphs and iconography filmed on Burial Hill in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Up to this point, we've focused on stones that are made of slate. In this section, we're going to look at stones made of white marble. And we'll just now swivel around so we can see the stone for Mary Morton who died September 12, 1883, when she was 66 years and 11 months. On the stone, she's identified as the wife of James Morton. And this is important because you can see above that the symbol on this stone is really directing us to think about that human relationship of a husband and a wife. It's a very beautiful sentiment, I love thee with hands clasped. Often on marble stones of the 19th century, you might see a hand with a finger pointing up to heaven, reminding you of the soul's uh, flight to heaven. But here, the symbol is connecting us with the, the, between the departed and those that are left behind to mourn her. The verse at the bottom of the stone reads, I lean o'er thee, my best beloved, my heart on thy heart lay. I lean o'er thee and do weep for the time to come for us to meet. So from this verse, we, we definitely get a sense of, of loss, of grief for, from James um, as, he, as he's left without his beloved wife, Mary. We know that the two were married on October 11th, 1846, so they had been married for almost 37 years when Mary died. This gravestone, unlike some of the earlier stones that we looked at, is really highlighting this personal loss. It's connecting the living to the dead. But there's also in this verse a hope of reunion. So although James Morant is going to grieve that he has to let his wife go, he is hoping that there will be a time to come when they will meet. Other gravestones on Burial Hill also convey this sentiment. The grave of Bathsheba James, the wife of Captain William Holmes, who died in 1830 at age 35, reads this. Farewell, dear wife, until that day more blessed, when, if deserving, I with thee shall rest. With thee shall rise, with thee shall live above, in worlds of endless bliss and boundless love. Now, in some of the stones that we saw earlier, we did have verses that referred to the resurrection of the dead, to the, the flight of the body, the rising of Christian believers after death. Um, this verse actually connects that, that experience so that the two people are rising together. So death is not bringing an end to human relationships, but hopefully um, a, a place to continue them beyond this life. Now, Mary Morton's husband, James, we believe is buried on Burial Hill. We have a record of his burial in 1895, but there is no gravestone for him that we can find. Um, their son, George Morton, died in 1915, and his grave, we do know, is in Oak Grove Cemetery. Um, but Mary isn't alone here. Um, next to her are her parents, Rhoda C. Davy and Isaac Davy. And if we look at the symbol on Rhoda's grave, we see this sheaf of wheat. Now, that's the symbol we have not yet seen. It symbolizes the cycle of life. So if you think about the sowing of seed and the reaping of the harvest that repeats every year, and it's most typically seen on stones for older adults. So it implies that death has come at the end of a long, fruitful life. And sure enough, Mary's mother, Rhoda, was 86 years, when she, 86 years old when she died in 1881. A stone that's almost the duplicate of this stone is close to the uh, memorial to Governor William Bradford. Um, it's the stone for Sally Bradford, who died in 1882 when she was 99 years old. And on her stone, it reads, she was the last of the sixth generation in direct descent from the Pilgrim Governor William Bradford. So certainly Sally must have been very proud of her Bradford heritage. Um, and it, a, a sheaf of wheat is an appropriate way to remember her at living till she was 99 years old. Now let's walk down the hill a bit to see some stones that use a symbol associated with someone whose life has been cut short. You can see that we're walking
walking towards School Street. So the sheaf of wheat was a symbol of a long life. Here on this stone we have a lamb, which was very common in the 19th century. The, the, the lamb often was used to symbolize Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed. Um, it's a symbol of, of the Lord's provision. Um, Psalm 23 uses that imagery of uh, the Lord being a shepherd, a good shepherd. So in some ways, this symbol is a sign of comfort in the face of death, and particularly a child's death. This is the gravestone of Elizabeth Abbey Wright, and you'll note, instead of saying, here lies the body, or even in memory of, it reads, sweetly fell asleep in Jesus. We're, we're somewhat separated from that idea of physical death. Instead, um, there's an image of a child simply sleeping in the arms of Jesus. She died in 1858. She's the only daughter of Otis and Elizabeth Wright, and she was 11 years old, almost 12 years old, when she died. The verse here reads, The once loved form now cold in death, each mournful thought employs, and nature weeps her comforts fled, and withered all her joys. Hope looks beyond the bounds of time, when what we know, now deplore shall rise in full immortal prime, and bloom to fade no more. So in this verse we have this sentiment of the, the great grief, this loss that's come too soon, um, the fact that poor Elizabeth has, has died before she even reached adulthood. Um, but at the same time, there's the hope looking beyond time itself um, to, to a period when Elizabeth will rise again. Um, and at that time, her bloom will fade no more. So again, this is very much a, a stone that has been created in a Christian culture um, where that, that belief in the resurrection of the dead, um, the belief in heaven is still very strong. Um, and so it would have been the use of the lamb and the use of that verse um, would have been intended to provide comfort to Elizabeth's parents and to the other viewers of this stone. Because of course, death in childhood and infant mortality were very common um, in previous periods of history, um, especially before there were vaccines. So I want to show one more symbol. This is, a, well, the same symbol, but just a different form. Here we have another lamb on this very small stone. Um, as you can see, I, the, the marble is, is very eroded. Um, marble is a soft stone, and so it erodes easily. Um, so it's almost hard to tell that that is a lamb, but it is supposed to be a lamb. Um, and then here in ra uh, raised letters, we have Little Willie. This is the gravestone for Willie H. Barnes, who died August 16th, 1850, when he was just 10 months and 11 days old. So um, it's, it's, it's rather difficult, I think, for us. Um, today to, to look at these graves and to think of the small children who are buried here. Um, but again, gravestones were intended not just to mark the place where someone is buried, but also to, um, to convey a message, perhaps a message, as we saw in the first video of um, the inevitability of death, perhaps a message of hope and, and tying it to the Christian belief of um, the life of the soul after death. Um, perhaps a message of comfort that um, even the, the smallest child is not forgotten by God um, and that they, they can, um, in their innocence as little lambs, they will be remembered and cherished.